Hey guys, it's May May, and you would have seen, if you watch our live shows or our crafter after shows, you would have seen when this was sent to me by a sweet subscriber. I'm going to open this up and show you what it is. It is a stationary box that holds cards and tags, a little note card, a place for postage stamps. It holds a pen, all kinds of good stuff, and it's super cute. And now you have seen these on the internet. This is not new, but so many of you asked me to make one to show you how I would do it. And I decided I would do that for you because there was so many of you that requested it. But you can see you get little get these are little note cards. You get the little tags I just showed you. And you also can put six, or at least in this case, six greeting cards and envelopes in here. And it all closes up nice and neat just like this and this little lid keeps everything together so if you give this to someone or if you make them for yourself you have a nice little thing to sit on your desk to hold your cards so we're going to make that now it can get a little cumbersome so i've tried to simplify it in a way that works for me i hope it's going to work for you too i'm just going to show you how i did it so i'm using my scoreboard and you can see it's a new scoreboard for me and i've got it all decked out i'm really excited about it i love it so the first thing you're going to start with is a piece of cardstock that measures 10 by 12. So 10 wide, 12 long, okay? You're going to put that into your scoreboard. Now, the first thing you're going to do is score line. So here's what happens. With the 10 inch side in your scoreboard, okay, you're going to score at 2 inches, at 8 inches, and then we're going to turn it. So we're gonna put the 12 inch side in and we're gonna score at five and at seven. Now I'm gonna turn it back one turn, just like this. Because I want to adjust the edges, I'm making exactly the one she sent to me. So because I wanna make it very similar, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make another score mark, but this time the score mark is only gonna meet at this first one here. So I'm gonna to go to three fourths of an inch and score to the first score mark. And then I'm going to come out here to nine and a quarter and score at the first mark. Now, don't worry. All our measurements will be on the blog. It's going to be super easy to follow. I'm even going to do this. So here's my paper, and I made a sample with marker so you could see what it looks like, okay? So we scored at two and then at eight, all right? We turned it. We scored at five and then at seven, and then we came back. And the only reason I did that is so I would know to score where my score mark should stop. Now you could start with your five by seven. You could do this first and then do your other scores, which is perfectly fine. But my brain works in such a way that I have to start with the box facing this way. So it doesn't matter as long as your score marks look like this. So do what works for you. So there is your sample of your score marks. Okay, now then, this is the box that we just did. This is basically the card box. I'm gonna go ahead and score the other pieces while we're here. So I'm gonna score the lid. Now the lid can be a little tricky. It's not too bad, okay? You have to cut it six and one eighth inch wide by 10 and one eighth inch long. And as long as you do that, the rest is simple. I'm gonna put this into the scoreboard on the sixth and one eighth side, and then we're going to score it. So on this side, the six and one eighth inch side, we're gonna score it at two inches. And then we're gonna score it at four and one eighth, which means one click above four, okay? We're gonna turn it and we're gonna put the 10 and one eighth inch side in. We're gonna score it at two and eight and one eighth. Now you might be wondering why we're doing that. We need to give it a little bit of room to fit over the box so that one eighth is built into this to do that for you. If you do these score marks like this, you totally have it, it's all done. All right, so we can move this aside. Now we're gonna score the piece that is the divider right in the middle for the big pocket of cards. Makes sense as we get going, but I wanna show you kind of where we're at. So this piece is eight and a half by four and one fourth. So for score marks here, the first thing we're gonna do on the four and one fourth side, we're gonna score it at three inches all the way down. Okay, so at the three inch mark all the way down. Then we're gonna turn it. We're gonna score it at one and a quarter and then on this end, we're gonna score it at seven and one quarter. So there you go, this one's ready. Now we're gonna do this piece and this piece. That's the ones that hold the greeting cards and the tags. And those are going to be these guys. So you're gonna have a piece that measures two inches. Okay, they're both two inches tall. This one measures five and a half, and this one measures four and a half. And here's how we're gonna score those. 
So for this piece that's the five and a half inch piece, I find it easier for me to kind of hold down here and score here. So I'm gonna score it at four and a half and at five. I'm gonna turn it, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Score it at four and a half and at five. That gets me the score marks that I need, but I don't have to try to get over here into this little corner and do it. Now for this one, it's the smaller one. It's the four and a half inch piece. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna score it at three and a half and four. I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna score it again, three and a half and four. Now, if you have a pattern here, that might matter. You might need to get over here and do half inch, one inch, then three and a half and four. But for me, just turning it makes it easier for me. All right, we've got a lot of it done. Is that all? I think it is. Let's put it together. So this is the body of the box. And what we're gonna do first is make a couple of cuts. And I'm gonna take just my fussy cutting scissors and right here, these two squares or rectangles on the side, I'm gonna cut straight up to the first score line on the side. Now, I'm just cutting straight along the edge of the score line. Then I'm gonna come back and just make a very slight angle cut. That's just gonna take some of the bulk out of there. I'm not doing as big of an angle as I usually do. I find for stability, I like to leave as much as I can in there. But when I lay this down, you can see I just took a little sliver out just to open it up a little bit. Let's do it on the other side as well. And I like to make this cut before I do any folding. I'll show you why. So the reason I do those cuts first is because now I can fold everything and not have to worry about this one. You'll see in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold everything in and I'm just finger creasing it. And the reason is this box only has to fold at 90 degrees. So I don't really need to crease, crease, crease and make it really weak at those turns. I can leave a little body in those and it'll be fine. So we've done that one. Let's crease this one. You can certainly bone fold of this if you think you want to, but I think since this only has to be 90 degrees, I'm not gonna crease, crease it. This I will, this is that little three-fourths edge here. I need it to lay really flat, so I am gonna bone fold it nice and flat. Okay, and then this one's gonna fold in, just finger crease, and then really crisp and flat here. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do with this box like this, I'm gonna do a little bit of gluing. So this piece here, we don't really need. You can cut it away, except that I find that it's really good for stability. So what I'm gonna do is just glue it down to the inside of the box, because like I said, it just adds a little extra strength to these corners or to this bottom, and I kinda like that. Same over here. Now that I've got those middle pieces glued down, these pieces on the side that we really don't need, you could cut them away, but I decided not to. I decided to use them as stability again. So I'm just gonna glue these down, probably need a little more on the edge than that. There we go. And then these become stability for the side. Because this is gonna be something that the person you give it to or yourself opens and closes a lot, anytime you can add stability in those kind of places, go for it. That's a good thing to have. So I'm just gonna do the same here. Just instead of cutting it away, I'm just gonna use it instead of getting rid of it. So this is now the back or the part that holds the cards. And this is the front that's gonna hold our little notepad and our little pocket. All right, so now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna show you how this closes up. See that? Super cool. But before I start doing anything else, I want to mat this guy. Now I gotta show you about matting because it got a little bit hairy for me and I'm gonna show you what I decided to do. So I decided to make myself a box, okay? So this is a box made in just a light color paper that I could see. I decided to do this so I could put all of the mat, the mat measurements on each piece where I wanted it. Now the reason I did this, I wanted to be able to use multiple papers and not use one paper, but I needed to keep my brain clear, right? So if I did this, I could look and go, okay, I want G to look like this pattern so I know the size to cut and I know where it should land. Now this is one mat, I'm not double matting. You'll notice on this project, she did a double mat. I'm doing a single mat, but if you want a double mat, you would just change your measurement or add another measurement that's a quarter of an inch smaller and write it on here. So what I did was I went through designer paper and I cut all of my pieces for this mat. I also then labeled them with whatever letter 
corresponds. This may seem like overkill, but let me tell you what I'm thinking. If you're going to make a bunch of these for gifts, this will make life easy in the future. You'll be able to just come in and put one together super fast. So what I need to do right now is I want to go ahead and mat A, D, E, and F. I want to mat all of these, and I want to go ahead and mat all of this, okay? And I'm even going to go ahead and mat this whole piece. But this lets me know what goes where. For me, that just made it easy. You guys said you wanted to see how I did it, so that's what we're going to do. And you see here, I have all of my little mat pieces cut, but all I have to do is look at the back of them to see where it goes. This is A. I wrote an A, and it goes right inside there. That makes things super easy. So I don't even have to think. I did it first to get everything built, but here I don't. So now I'm just going to take this and mount it to where it goes. Tell me in the description below, or tell me in the comments below if you think this is overkill or if you think this is something that will make this project easy for you. There, there are some projects that I just feel like we'll make so many times that making ourselves some samples is a good idea. So there's that piece matted. I did not mat the insides, although you could because we're putting it together like this, but I did not mat this side. But you, like I said, you could. This portion will show, but I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, I'm gonna flip this guy over and go ahead and mat the back. And I know that the back, based on my sample, is M. So I'm gonna look for M. There it is right there. So this goes down. I've never been this efficient with a project, but I just know and I'm going to want to make these for Christmas. <laughs> I'm going to want to do this again, and I don't want to have to remeasure and do all that. So I thought in the future, this will make life simple. Now, of course, all you have to do is use the measurements on the blog if you just want to make a one of these, and it'd be super easy. So here's B, and B is this panel. By the way, I did my panels whatever letters I wanted. It doesn't matter as long as you can see the letters. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Okay, and this is C, and C goes on this side. Now, if you're new to my channel, I know your question is going to be, what glue is that? This is called Art Glitter Glue. There is no glitter in it. We carry it on our store at MayMayMadeIt.com. It is amazing, and yes, it does work as fast as I'm showing you here. It just does. I do tell you less is more with this product, so you might want to get the fine metal tip that kind of helps to control it, but I've kind of gotten used to it and, kind of, and can make it work for me. All right, now I want to put this one here, and this one is letter G. It's probably this. Let's just see, because I lettered. Nope, that's J. See, it helps me because I picked out where I wanted all my paper to go, and so I know that's G, and that goes there. Cool, huh? So I know that my patterns will end up exactly where I want them. Now, these two pieces are H and I, and those are my side panels. Telling you, I made one of these earlier as just a test. You know, I did a little sample and I thought there has to be an easier way for me to wrap my head around what pieces go where. Now, if you're using all the same pattern paper, like if you're not mixing your patterns like I am, it really doesn't matter. You can just cut all the pieces and put them where they go. But I love the idea of having um, kind of a hodgepodge of mixed patterns. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and map the front as well. So the front is J, and there's my J written here. I also wrote my letters on the side that I needed to glue. This helps me to keep up with orientation of paper and also which pattern I want to go where. So there is that. Then the two side panels. This is K and L. It just worked out that way, just the way I landed with, the, with my pen and the alphabet. You know, I did not plan it that way. That's just how it worked out. So now this whole piece is matted everywhere I need it matted. And I can go ahead and start putting the piece together here to bring the box in. Another tip real quick. After you've got all your pieces cut, put them in the pocket of the back of your, te of your template. And it's really cool because you can just pull them out of here and you know where everything is. Just another tip. Thought I'd show you that. Now let's put together that panel that separates the two um, pockets. Basically, this is the one that holds the big greeting cards. I'll go ahead and fold everything just like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to cut away the little squares here at the bottom. You don't have to cut it away. Let me show you what you can do. You can just cut a straight line up that score, like so, and a straight line up this score. And then you can fold this and kind of make a half box out of it before you put it into the um, big divider. But I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is take these guys away because I really don't need them. And I'm only going to worry with gluing in the bottom and the sides. But you can do whichever one is more comfortable for you. So this guy's ready to insert. But before I do, I want to put my matte piece on. And this is the piece labeled D. And this is where it goes. 
So see how I'm mixing these patterns up and it'll be cute at the end to have all the mixed up patterns, but I'm not having to think because of having that template. I keep preaching about that template, but I love having that little box. It makes things super easy. So that's all that needs to be matted here and it's ready to be inserted into our box. Now here's how I did it. This is the piece where it's gonna live. I went ahead and inserted this piece first and it's going to get glued to the middle section. So I'm going to add adhesive here. Okay, and then I'm going to place this panel piece right at the fold or the score line for the lid. Now let me show you what I mean. See, I can close this and get no resistance. That's what I'm looking for. If you cross that score line, you're gonna get resistance and you don't want that. So that's how I did that. The next thing I'm gonna do is add glue to this side. And bring these pieces together, match them up and glue them into place. I'm standing on its side so I can get my hand in there and squish that down. And then we're gonna glue this together. So I'm gonna open this so you can see it. I'm just gonna glue this panel in and close this guy up on top of it. Perfect. So now we're starting to build. See how it's starting to come together? Now we wanna add the pockets to the front, but we need to fold them and mat them. So for these guys, you just fold your score marks on either end. They don't have a bottom and they work out fine because they're just really kind of placeholders. So they'll go something like that. So I'll just fold these edges as well, just like so. Now this piece goes on top of there. So there's one and then we'll do the other. Now we're just gonna mount these on and they're gonna go right here. Now when you're doing this at home, it's gonna be a lot easier because it's not gonna just keep trying to stand up on you, but I want you to see what I'm doing. If you're doing it at home, mount it with it facing you, but I'm gonna try to do it where you can see it. So here's our little folded panels. This piece is the outside edge that does not get glued. This piece gets glued. By the way, you could do this with sticky tape if you wanted to. I just like using my art glitter glue because it's so fast. All right, I'm gonna glue this piece into place. And what I'm doing is just lining up that glued section with the edge and bottom of the box. See that? I just lined that up just like that. Then I'm gonna glue, add glue. Let me turn it this way for you. Then I'm gonna add glue to this flap, the same, the opposite of the other one, okay? I'm gonna fold it under and tuck it down. Now this is one reason I really like to use the wet glue because I'm able to kind of move this into place where I want it and get that to be nice and square. So I'm using my fingers to square that up. And I'm gonna show you how that looks. Can you see how that's just glued to the back wall? Perfect. We're gonna do the same thing with this. This little flap here gets the glue and it's gonna sit right next to the other one, which makes this one really easy. So you'll just kind of sit it into place and let that glue down. I'm gonna hold it for just a second. And then I'm gonna go to the other end, see if I can do it like this for you guys. And I'm gonna glue this flap into place. With this one, it's a little bit tougher, but really not bad. So just line it up with the edge of the box. Then I like to sit it up and make sure everything's nice and even. And the next thing I like to do is right here where these guys meet, I just run a little glue in there and bring them back together. And that just adds a little more stability for those two little pockets. It's not necessary, but I kind of liked how it made it nice and sturdy. So that is the basics of our box there at the top. We've got our small pocket, our larger pocket, and our really big pocket in the back. And this guy closes up like this, but we need to do our lid. Now for the lid, I'm gonna go ahead and do all of my crease marks. Again, I'm just using my finger because they only need to be 90 degrees, just like so. And then we're gonna make a slice or two. Okay, at the, the small part here, the little two inch squares you have, we're gonna slice up to the first score line cross, just like that, and then to this one here. Now the other thing I did, you know I showed you earlier where I took just a little bit of bulk out of here with a tiny angle cut? Doing the same thing here. I don't wanna take too much of the bulk out because it keeps the stability on this box, but I'm gonna slice just this little sliver out just so I have room to close this in nice and neat. So you can see that little sliver I cut. Opposite end, do the same thing. Okay, so with the top facing up, I'm gonna mat these pieces. 
So this piece is letter N, I wrote N on it, and N coincides with this section here, okay? And then this piece is P, and P goes on this side. This piece is letter O, I have it marked, so it goes on this side. And then on the, on the ends, we have our two little pieces left. So these little pieces go here and here. And then we can close the box up. So I'm gonna glue all these pieces into place. Now we can assemble it. And all I'm gonna do is push this middle piece down and add some glue to it. And then I'm gonna bring the blank side in first because it's gonna live under the piece we've already matted. Let's sit that down and get it nice and square. While I'm here, I'm gonna put glue here. And I'm just gonna bring this up and close that box in. I like to do this like this on the table because I get a nice flat edge if I do it that way. So there's that side. We'll go to the other side and do the same thing. Glue on the inside piece. Bring the blank piece in first. Then I'm gonna put glue on this piece. and close it in. Set that up so I can get it good and square. So that is our lid ready to go. So this is our box, okay? Let's close it up and put the lid on. I'll show you how that looks. Just like this. And look how cute that is. And that's with no decoration. But because I made that template, I knew where to put all these pieces so that my patterns made sense. See, I love that. Now let's work on this section. By the way, I'm gonna take some photos of this and put it on my blog so you can look at this and see how this works and also probably get the measurements off of it. The other thing I wanna show you is, I made these little tiny tick marks every time I did my cuts so I would know that I had made that cut and had it ready. And I thought it might be fun to do that and maybe the next time I make it, use a different color pen and that way I can just mark off as I go. I think that'll be cool. Or even just make tally marks and I'll know exactly how many of these I've made over time. Now for the booklet and the stamp pocket. Let's do the stamp pocket first. So this is the piece with the three inch side in the score in the scoreboard. I'm gonna score it at half an inch and then at two and a half. Then I'm gonna turn it and I'm gonna score it at one and a half. And what that does is just basically give me a half an inch trim all the way around. And then I'm gonna come in here and just cut this little corner away that I don't need. because this is the bottom. You do want to fold this up like this because you don't want your stamps to fall out. So what we'll do is we'll fold this up at the bottom. Okay, and I am gonna crease that because I want it to lay flat. And then I'm gonna fold these sides in and crease them. We're just making a little pocket, just something to put some postage stamps in. And then what I'm gonna do just real quick, real quick is put a little glue right under those little flaps and go in and glue those down. Just hold those for a second. And that's the, the basics of our pocket. So this piece is six and three eighths long. We're gonna fold this in half, but we're gonna have a one eighth inch spine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna score it at three and one eighth and then at three and a quarter. And you'll see what I mean by that one eighth inch spine. We just created ourselves this little piece to put some note paper inside. So see how it does that? So these little pieces I have here are cut just shy of three and a half inches by six inches long. So just about three and an eighth, but not exactly, just so that it will go right inside of your little booklet cover here. And these are gonna get folded just in half. So you can see here that the little spine we created allows for the thickness of the folded paper to make a little notebook for your stationary box. Perfect. Now I'm gonna use my staple punch board from We Are Memory Keepers to staple the little book. So what I'm gonna do is remove this magnetic piece and I'm just gonna lay this guy something like this. I'm kind of eyeballing this. And I just put my little stapler in place and staple that through. So there's one side done. And then I'm gonna bring it down here and do the other side basically the same way. Now I'm just kind of decorating the front of my little notebook with some scraps that I had left over. So I'm just gonna use some of the handwriting paper. And it wasn't quite long enough for what I wanted to do. So what I've done is I'm gonna glue this to the top portion of the little notebook like so. Just so I can use my scraps, cause that's, I like to do that. Then I'm gonna take this little stripe piece and put it at the bottom. I think that'll be cute. 
That way I'll kind of have all of the colors represented inside the little book. Now this little guy is going to live right up here in this corner and you'll be able to use it. Isn't that super cute? This little notebook we just made. I love that. So I'm going to glue it down. And I'm using a good bit of glue here because I want it to stay in place as someone's opening it or closing it. And another thing, you don't have to use a handmade notebook. You can purchase those little spiral bound or those little notebooks that you can put in here and you can use one of those just the same. Now we need to put our little pocket in place for postage. It lives right here. So I'm going to glue down the little strips that we folded under. You probably forgot about this guy already, hadn't you? But he's still here. And I'm going to line him up at the bottom. Just kind of centered in what's left of the section here. Then I'm going to cut a little piece to go on there to be cute. So just a piece that's cut a quarter of an inch smaller than that little square, that we that little rectangle we made. And just glue that into place. Now then, when you give this to somebody, go ahead and put some stamps in there so they'll have them and they'll know what that pocket is for too. Now we need a place for a pen right here. So these RSVP pens are my very favorite pens. I love to write with these pens and they work perfect for making a custom pen to match. What I did was I took a piece of cardstock and I cut it the length of that barrel of the pen and I'm gonna roll it into a circle. You've seen me do this before. I'm gonna use my bone folder to help me get that circle going. Just kind of break the fibers up of the paper because it's cardstock. You could do this with coordinating paper too if you had some. I'm just gonna get this rolling. It's a little bit big, so I'm gonna trim some down. But it's a great way to use up your scraps and get a matching pen. Push that in. Then I'm using my pokey tool and putting it inside and just pressing against the paper to get it to go all the way in. Just work that down until it meets at the top. And it has, now I'm gonna put the little ink back in, twist the top on, and we now have a custom pen for our stationery set. Now to put it on, super easy. I'm just gonna make a loop to hold it and I'm gonna use another piece of scrap paper and I think I'm gonna use the opposite so it won't be striped and it's gonna go right here. I'm just gonna make a loop that will be big enough for my pen to live in. So I'm gonna do like a test loop. Put my pen through there and see, that's a little too big looks like because I want my loop to kind of live up here. That feels about right. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this away. You could do this with ribbon too, if you just wanted to use some ribbon. Put some glue on one end. Close this up, just like so. You can make this any size you want, bigger, smaller. If you think it needs to be bigger, you can do that. I think this is gonna hold just fine. Let's add some glue. And I'm gonna lay my pen here where I want it to live. And then just put that down where it needs to go. So there we go. It's glued in place. It's nice and snug, okay? But pay attention to your pen length. If mine were any longer, it would not work. It is just the right width or length, or else I would have been in trouble. That pen is going to live right in the top. See there? Your cards will still fit inside, no problem. And we can put the lid on. Now, I'm not going to make the cards today. I just wanted to show you how to put your box together perfectly here. The cards that fit inside, I will show you. These are standard A2. This is a standard A2 card, okay? So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. That will fit in the back and you can get six there. Then this little note card is a three by three note card. It will fit into the front and you can put six of those in as well. And then the little tag, let me measure it. I haven't measured these yet. This one is a three and a half by two and a quarter, roughly, it's a little bigger than two and a quarter, but that'll fit right inside here and you can get six of those in as well. So see, you can just build your gift to match the paper, which I'm gonna do. I am gonna make cards for this and envelopes and the tags. If you'd like to see that, I could do that for Tuesday's video because we're doing a card making series so I could show you cards and note cards if you wanna do that. So let me know in the comments below. But there you go, this is your little stationary gift box. You guys are gonna be making these like crazy and when you do, I wanna see them over on our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It and So Did I. Let me bring the finished full one in so you can see it. 
So this one is filled up. You can see it's got all the cards, all the tags, everything inside, the little notebook, the little pocket for the stamps, and it closes up. And I love the way she double matted. It's beautiful to have all that, the black and the strawberry together, and I love the ribbon tied around. You can do anything you'd like to dress these guys up. Thanks so much for watching today, guys. I hope this helps you in your gift giving for the holidays. And let me know below what you think about making those cards for Tuesday's video. I'll be happy to do that. If you make one of these, we want to see it over on our Facebook group, which is called May May Made It, and so did I. Head over and share with us what you're making. Show us what your greeting card box looks like. We want to see it. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.